we learned two other charts. We learned our, our chart and uh, X bar chart. We learned two other charts, but because you already know, it would be repetitive for you. So like, imagine that we are practicing similar concept in another scenario, two scenarios, uh, which are when uh, we are counting the number of faults instead of measuring uh, the average or the range for when the data is nominal. Uh, and uh, basically we will review this, all of these steps again for two other charts, and we will finish the statistical process control. We're just copying the, the value column, right? Um, sample and value, because, you know, it's important to know what is the sample size and what is the number of samples. Uh, right. How many samples they have taken? 25. Yes, very good. 25 samples have been taken. And the sample size is also given to us. So this is the information that we have. Sample size is 100. If we, t uh, tomorrow, how many items we will take into our samples? Tomorrow we are going to take a sample. How many items will be in our sample? Yeah, so every day we take a sample of 100. So tomorrow we will take another sample of 100 items. So for example, if we are producing pencils and we want to check if these pencils are good quality or not, we produce tens of thousands of pencils every day, but we take a sample of 100 of them tomorrow. So next question, after taking the 100 uh, uh, pens or pencils um, into our next sample tomorrow, how many samples we have taken at the end of tomorrow? 200. <laughs> uh, no, every day, <laughs> notice that every day we take only 100 samples, but the number of samples that we take uh, is a different story. Although the sample size would remain 100 and every day we take 100, but today, up to today, we have had 25 samples. Tomorrow we will have 26 samples. Uh, this scenario is this. You know, when we take a sample of products and we want to see if the product is faulty or not, uh, this is a binomial distribution. Notice that it's a binary outcome. Either it is a good product or it's a faulty product. So contrary to what we did in the previous class, um, maybe I show you, you know, in this data set, in every sample, we had three measurements and we could actually find the average of them. Even with three items in the sample, we would measure each one, we would find the average. In this case, if you look at your sample, let's say in a sample of 100, maybe five of them are faulty and 95 of them are good. The idea of average doesn't exist. So for example, in the first sample, the first time that we took a sample, three out of 100 were faulty. The only thing that we can measure in this case is called proportion. And we can calculate the proportions. Notice that the sample size is always 100. So three divided by 100 is the proportion in this sample and uh, I have to always refer to the same cell C29. Therefore I press F4 and now I can copy. I have all of the proportions. You know, a lot of times it is just called P or proportion, but I just wrote it so you know why it is called proportion chart or P chart, okay?
and let me rename this one. We call it P data or proportion data. When I bring mine down, mine doesn't give all the correct numbers. Yeah, I show you why. Do you see this dollar yes, sign? Yeah. Oh, you had the dollar sign, but still it is not working? No, no, no I see yours. I didn't no, have no. Uh, Okay, okay. So the way that we analyze whether the proportion of faulty products is in control or not is identical to what we have done before. So nothing new here. The only thing that you have to pay attention to is that when you are taking a sample and you're just checking for the number of faulty products in that sample, then you cannot use X bar chart or R chart because there is no range, there is no mean, it's either faulty or not faulty. And the only thing that you can calculate is proportion. Therefore you have to aim for P chart. Once you make that decision, the rest is simple and mechanical. So we have to find the center line. Let's call it P bar. Oh, no, no, here. We need the upper control limit, lower control limit and everything. So P bar. And P bar would be the average of all of the proportions. This is average of all of the proportions. Of course, we need to add the dollar signs. Average of all of the proportions. That is the center line. Are you with me? Yeah, just keep the formula, please. Once you are done, give me a go ahead signal. Go ahead signal. <laughs> okay. So now we need upper control limit and lower control limit. Obviously, if the control department realizes that something is out of the control limits, we have to do corrective actions. Now for a P distribution, um, uh, we go three standard deviations above the P bar and three standard deviations below the P bar. So we have to find out the standard deviation of P bar. I write it for you if you don't remember from your statistics class, standard deviation of P bar is square root of P multiplied by one minus P divided by N. Many of you may remember that. So here, the, the best estimate for the proportion of faulty products in total is 0 0.22. So we find the SQRT square root of P bar multiplied by one minus P bar. Hold on. Why it doesn't do that? P bar divided by N. Notice that N is a constant. It is not the number of samples, it is sample size. Perfect. Good. And this will be constant, right, Amir? The standard deviation? Uh, yeah, standard deviation is uh, an evaluation of how much variation we observe in this data. And obviously, it's um, for us, it's based on this data. It's a constant upper control limit would be the center line plus three times the standard deviation. Right did, you get, did you get the same thing? Yeah, it's all the same. Very good. I'm like, your value is also 0 0.66, right? Yeah. And then the lower control limit would be the center line 
minus SG standard deviations. Um, what did you do for low control, Amir? Uh, I got negative something. Did you get the same thing? Yep. So you set it to zero, right? Exactly. Because the number of faults cannot be negative. In all of these charts, a real value, the result of a measurement cannot be negative, except if, you know, sometimes if the measurement of, even if the measurement of lengths can never be negative. Um, the measurement of location can be negative, but for most of the situations, notice that your measurements cannot lead to any negative number. Therefore, the lower control limit that is negative, in fact, is cut to zero. Did you minus three? Three standard deviations. So 0 0.22 minus three standard deviations uh, is a negative number. Therefore, we change it to zero. And outer one third on the close to upper control limit. And again, outer one third close to lower control limit and outer two third close to control limit. And to find those, we need to find the delta. Notice that in this case, uh, the distance between center and upper control limit is U delta and so forth. So I would say U delta is upper control limit, upper control limit, minus center line and L delta is center line minus lower control limit. Notice that this is one of those cases that the the upper delta and lower delta are not the same. So the charts will not be symmetric. Oh, LCL cannot be a negative number. <clears throat> you have to change it to zero. If you saw that your formula shows you a negative number as it did to me, you convert it to cut it to zero. Oh, so you just go and manually make it zero. Yes, because the the measurements can never be the measurement of lengths or the measurement uh. of number of faults can never be negative now we have to go from upper control limit we have to subtract one third of this guy and that gives us the outer one third ribbon don't forget f4 And like before, again, if we go from the upper control limit, minus. Okay. So we will do the same thing on the lower side. It would be the lower control limit plus, hold a second, to show you. It will be the lower control limit plus one third of the delta. And don't forget F4, drag down, and this one is 
lower control limit plus two third of this guy. And again, four. And the criteria is that look at this from lower control limit, zero, we go up, we go up, gradually we reach to center line. And then it should always go up. Each one of these columns should be uh, constants. And now to create the chart, we select this region. Perfect, thank you. Just leave it there for one second. Sure. Can you show me the outer one third over here? On the lower side, right? So now we select this whole region, including the proportion. Proportion is our variable. And like always, we generate a chart. We have to make a decision about this chart. Okay, so one by one, please read the rules and let us make a judgment. Obviously, none of the points is out of control limits. And this is a P chart. Move this P chart to another page. We move it to a new page called P chart. And we have P data and P chart. Let's make them green. Green. And green. So now let's think about this chart properties. What was the first rule? A points in a row above or below the center line. Eight point in a row. Uh, this is okay, right? We don't see eight point in a row above or below. Oh, we forgot something very important. I'm let's if I'm not let's okay. make the sorry we have to make the center just give me a moment okay everybody please make your center line black uh, you know it's a good idea to make your center line stand out let's make it black and black and even we can make it even the like a line to be a little thicker now, this is our center line. It matters. And we don't have eight points in a row on one side. I think the maximum that I see is this. One, two, three, three on one side. Or here we have one, two, three, four. We don't have eight points in a row in one side. What is the second rule? It's 10 out of 11 consecutive points above or below the center line. 10 out of 11. No, that is fine. It is not violated. Next rule, please. Two of uh, three. Go ahead. 12 of 14 consecutive points yeah. above or below yeah. the center line. Yeah, okay. 12 sorry. out of 14. 14. Consecutive points. Yeah, so 12 out of, yeah, these are all consecutive. Consecutive, consecutive, consecutive. Uh, right. So we have to choose a window of 14 and 12 of them should be on one side. The only 
place that I see a possibility is this set from here to here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, it's even this one more than three on the are on the other side. So no, that is also fine. Next rule. Two of three consecutive points in the outer one third region between the center line and one of the control limits. Yeah, so two out of three. Uh, this is one out of three. Here, the outer one third. Look at this, two out of three. So two out of three are out, you know, in outer one third, but notice that this is at the lower side and this is a P chart. It's a probability of fault chart. So in this case, it is not really alarming because, you know, the, the system went stray uh, on the good side. So at that point, they were doing very well. So um, I, am, I am a little bit concerned, but this is okay because it's two out of three. You may be explaining that we see two out of three in outer one third, but it is on the safe side, not on the faulty side. So you're saying if those two points were sticking up, we would have been... Yeah, upset. then we would, we would be very concerned, yes. Yeah. And the next point, what is the next bullet? Four or five consecutive points in the outer two thirds region between the center line and one of the outer control and one of the control okay. limits. So let's check that. This is the outer two third, and we want four out of five consecutive points. One, two, three. No, we have three out of five. On the lower side, how about the lower side? Let's go to, this is outer four out of five. One is in outer one, three out of five, but not four out of five. So this one is also okay. So basically this process is not, you know, from the point of view of variations, notice that um, uh, the proportion is, you know, what is varying here. The proportion of faulty components seems to be varying randomly around their center line, and we couldn't even find a shift. So we would say the, the process is in control. So, so far we couldn't detect a necessity for a corrective action. Process is in control. Now I want to, uh, don't do what I'm doing right now. I just want to show you what might happen, okay? So um, I go back to my P data. I want to show you what can happen in the proportions. Now, these proportions uh, seem to be randomly varying. Uh, if the, the number of faults in a sample of uh, um, 100 products would change like this. After this five, if the next one was six, and the next one was five, the next one was seven, the next one was six, and the next one was eight, and the next one was seven, then let's go to the chart and see what would happen. So now we see that suddenly after that point, yes, still none of the points are out of control, but uh, a number of things are violated. Here we see two, and 
here we see two out of three, one, two, three, two out of three in outer one third. And also, let me change my color uh, to blue. Now you see that in this outer two third, one, two, three, four, fifth one is not in outer two thirds. So here we see four out of five in outer two thirds. So we find two reasons or maybe more. Look at this. There is another reason here. Uh, let me change my color to green now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, no. Uh, so that one is fine. So we have, we find if this kind of shift happens, then we have two reasons. One is that two out of three is in outer one third. The other is that four out of five is in outer two third. Uh, so if this happens to you, then you would say the process is it needs. Uh, uh, you know, correction, and we detect a shift and so forth. Otherwise, if all of the conditions are satisfied, you say the process is in control. If one of these are, then we are detecting a shift and we need to do corrective action. Basically, the meaning in real life is that you have to stop your process and recalibrate your machinery. If it's a service interview with your employees, something is going on. If this is the number of deaths, you know, the proportion of patients that are dying in the hospital, at this time you will shut down the hospital. Because in all of these points, everything was fine. And suddenly, from one point, the number of death or proportion of people who die is going up. Yet yeah, we do corrective action. So, for example, if you are the manager of a hospital and you see usually 5%, you know, this is the proportion of people 1% of thousands of people who come to your hospital, they die. So, and you mm -hmm. see that this is sometimes even so good that two consecutive days you are getting zero death. And then you are the manager of the hospital. And you see that after this date, this is the percentage of people who are dying. If you mm -hmm. are the manager of the hospital, what do you do? You should change in process the causal tree diagram, you would go, what can be the cause of death of so many, you know, a different pro proportion of people dying? And then, you know, is it cleaning? Is this the tiredness of surgery, surgeons, um, nurses? What? Anyway, whatever you do, you have to investigate. This is not a random animation. This is called, um, you know, it's a deterministic cause something must cause this. It's not a random variation cause. It's yeah. a specific cause that you have to detect. So now we go to our C data. Do I need, um, uh, okay, is there anybody who wants me to wait? No. Okay, so this is a different situation. A lot of you will lose a lot of marks in the exam because you cannot detect what is the difference between number of defects in a sample and number of faulty products in a sample. So I just uh, explain it for you. In the previous one, which was a p-chart, I draw a diagram. When do we do p-chart, okay? This is a production line, and in the production line, you know, it can be people, it can be goods, or it can be services done. Okay. And this is the production line. In a P chart, we take a random sample. So just imagine that there is a basket here, which is my sample. We randomly take a number of them into our sample. In the previous example, the number that was randomly selected from this production line was 100. And then we check, uh, you know, these are good, good, good. And the number of faulty products among these 100, and for example, here I have two out of 100, is the proportion that is faulty in that sample. 
In this case, we can calculate the proportion and we will draw a P chart as we already did. The second example is that we are producing aeroplanes. So let me draw a beautiful aeroplane for you. You have Boeing never seen that. Yeah, very beautiful one. Airbus 380. Yes. No, no, no. Etihad Airlines. Yeah, it's more like a, the one that I'm drawing is like the, like a World War II aeroplane. <laughs> it looks like the US the Israeli oh. Army. So now these are the aeroplanes in the Boeing aeroplane manufacturing facility. And, you know, every other one number of days, they produce one of these aeroplanes. The way that faults are done is that from every aeroplane, inspectors before, they are supposed to go to every part of this aeroplane and identify if there are any faults. So they go and they find there is a fault on this wing, there is a fault in this controller, there is a fault... Uh, you know, in this, the chairs and everything. So they realize that the number of faults in this aeroplane is three, okay? Um, and then, of course, one, once they inspect everything, they will correct those mistakes and they will ship it uh, or sell it to the buyer. You know, a couple of days later, the next aeroplane arrives at quality control department they find mistakes here and there. And this time, the number of faults is seven. Okay. So what is the difference between these two cases? The difference is that if I ask you in this first question, let me change my pen. In this question, what is the sample size? 100. Very good. The sample size is 100. In the second example, what is the sample size? One. No, my question is, why, why is the sample size one? Because we are checking both, right? No, because, you know, uh, in, in Boeing, they don't produce hundreds of airplanes every oh, day. So you okay. take a random sample. Mm -hmm. Every aeroplane that goes out, it shouldn't fall down. It's not like a pencil that you accept three of them to be faulty. You know, there was only two faults, two faulty aeroplanes shipped by Boeing, the, the new MX aeroplane. And it's two years that they cannot sell any aeroplane. You know, you cannot ship any of these aeroplanes without, with any faults. So once they every aeroplane reaches to the control department, they will check it. So sample size is one. Basically, you can say we don't take sample. We are checking every product. And the way that we check the product is that we count the number of flaws in that product. Uh, and therefore, what we will rely on in this case is C chart, a chart that relies on count, not on the proportion of faulty, because there is no proportion. It's just the number of faults that can happen. Uh, and uh, just then we look at, you know, is there three faults, seven faults? Like, look at this example here. The number of defects in the first product was two, next one was three, next one was zero, one of them is five. So as Every product that goes out, uh, they check it. Every single product that goes out, they check it. Anyway, the criteria is that if you are taking one product, you are counting the number of faults in that one product, therefore your sample size is one, and you're counting the number of flaws of that one product, then you will use C chart or count chart. The number of defects is here. We need the, uh, uh, sorry, I have to go to home. And if I go here, we need a C bar like always. 
and then we need upper control limit and lower control limit. Uh, yes, C bar would be the average. Of all of these, and of course, we want always the same thing. Okay, then you think to yourself, what is the upper control limit and what is the lower control limit? Notice that uh, in this case, there is no sample size, there is no proportion. We cannot find any mean or anything. Um, and the distribution for those of you who are interested is a Poisson distribution. And some of you may remember from your statistics class that a Poisson distribution's standard deviation of a Poisson distribution is square root of the mean and the variance is mu squared. So anyway, the square root of the mean is the variance. So if you want to go three standard deviations above the mean and three standard deviations below the mean, we just uh, need the standard deviation first. Standard deviation would be square root of our mean. And then you will use three standard deviations above the mean, three standard deviations below the mean. We get uh, equals to center line plus three times standard deviation. And we need Oh, it is negative. So zero. Uh, yes, zero. And oh uh, wait, sorry, Amir, did you just like, uh, did you just straight up type in the zero, or what did you? Yes, do? I typed zero. Oh, okay, okay. I, I overwrite. Okay, I overwrite I'll, I'll... the calculation. Oh, okay, okay. I, I was just wondering why it was red. It's okay. Yeah. And now we need outer two third and the outer one third ribbon close to the upper control limit. And again, outer one third close to lower control limit. Maybe I didn't do a four. And make let's make the center line uh, different and bold. <coughs> and let us send the charts to another. Oh, uh, sorry to person. sorry to interrupt, Amir. Um, how did you bold the line? Yeah, on the right side. Do you see this? When I click on this uh, line. Uh -huh. the, this format plot area shows up. If it doesn't show up, go to properties. 
And then here we have width. Okay. Let's move the chart to a new page. And this one we call C chart. C count chart. And what is your judgment? Is this process in control? So what is the first rule? Um, eight points in the row above or below the center line. Very good. Eight points. Is that OK? Um, yes. We don't see eight points in a row. 10 out of 11 on, the, on one side, where do you see that? Oh, it's not, <laughs> sorry. No, so that is not happening. Uh, 12 out of 14 on one side, is it happening? Oh, no. What is next? Uh, two of three contactive point and the outer one, uh, one third. Do we see two out of three in outer one third? No. No, not there. Two out of three in this outer one third. Do we see two out of three in this outer one third in the lower side? Yeah. Okay, so now two out of three are in outer <laughs> one third on the lower side. Um, is this worrying us? And, you know, for count chart, uh, you know, when it is zero, um, even though we see two out of three in that side, it's not really worrisome. So here you can say, yes, we observe two out of three, but uh, that is not a cause for action if we see these good things. Uh, what is the next bullet? Four of five consecutive points and the other Four two. out of five. Now, do we see four out of five in this outer two third? No, in total there are three. And on the lower side, uh, four out of five consecutive points. I don't think so. We don't see four out of five in the outer two thirds. So it is fine. And therefore the question, is this process uh, in control? The number of the count of flaws in products that are produced, is it in control? Yes. Yeah, it is. Sometimes two, sometimes zero, sometimes three, sometimes five. Uh, but these are random variations around the center line and we don't see a shift. And none of the points are out of control limits, so we feel happy. The only thing that I forgot to do is to change the title of the chart. This is a C chart. There, I mean, if we were to see a, a violation of the two out of three rule on the upside, would we then say it's out of control? Yeah, then you, then you say this, the, we detect a shift, although none of the points are out of control. Uh, we detect a shift in this process and we have to do corrective action. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for your control department, it is considered as out of control because you have to do corrective action. Uh, in all of these cases, the customer is still happy. Got it. Thank you.